Welcome medicos. Let's begin with this quote. It's time to inspire. Inspire yourself. Today's topic is Barrett esophagus. In this we will be reading about the definition, the etiopathogenesis, the morphology and the complication. And uh, we'll be discussing with the handwritten notes. Barrett esophagus. What is Barrett esophagus? Barrett esophagus is a complication of chronic GERD. GERD means gastroesophageal reflux disease. So it is a complication arising due to chronic GERD. And it is characterized by intestinal metaplasia within the esophageal squamous mucosa. And this is associated with increased risk of cancer. So what this means? So due to the chronic reflux of the gastric content, it causes damage to the lining of the esophagus and normally that is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. Since the constant reflux of the gastric content the, uh, in a chronic uh, manner that causes the damage and as a protective mechanism the lining goes into metaplastic changes. So the part of esophagus which is normally lined by squamous epithelium undergoes metaplastic changes to columnar epithelium of intestinal type. But it comes with a cost. It is associated with increased risk of cancer. Adenocarcinoma of esophagus. We'll be seeing about the dysplastic changes and all. Let us now discuss about the etiopathogenesis of Barrett esophagus. So there are few causes like sliding hiatus hernia, chronic gastritis and duodenal ulcer, persistent vomiting, surgical vagotomy, and neuropathy in alcoholics and diabetes. These all causes reflux esophagitis. And following reflux esophagitis, the stratified squamous epithelium of the lower esophagus get replaced by columnar epithelium as a protective mechanism this is happening and this type of metaplasia is known as columnar metaplasia. So this Barrett's esophagus is a pre-malignant condition and it evolves sequentially from Barrett's epithelium to dysplasia to carcinoma in situ and finally esophageal adenocarcinoma. This Barrett's epithelium is a columnar metaplasia with goblet cells as mentioned previously. This goblet cell here is very important. We'll see about it later. So this Barrett's esophagus being a malig pre-malignant condition will finally may lead to esophageal adenocarcinoma. Let's talk about the morphology. So with the help of endoscopy, this Barrett's esophagus can be recognized as tongues of red velvety mucosa. And this velvety mucosa, that appearance, we can see it, it will be extending upward from the gastroesophageal junction. So we can see that it is extending upward. And also one thing uh, we can notice that the metaplastic mucosa will alternate with the residual smooth pale squamous mucosa. So the metaplastic mucosa will be alternating with the smooth pale squamous mucosa. And it will interface with light brown columnar gastric mucosa distally. So we can see actually the small islands of residual pale squamous mucosa within this Barrett mucosa. Let us talk about the microscopic changes. So the microscopic feature what we see is columnar metaplasia which is the most common finding. The replacement of the squamous epithelium by the metaplastic columnar cells and we will be also seeing goblet cells and panet cells. And this goblet cell here is a very important point because goblet cells are diagnostic of Barrett esophagus. The intestinal metaplasia may be accompanied with dysplastic changes also which can be low to high grade. Now this Barrett esophagus is subclassified on the basis of length of the esophagus which is involved into long segment and short segment disease. So long segment mean greater than 3 or equal to 3 centimeter. Short segment mean less than 3 centimeter is involved. And the patient with short segment disease is at lower risk of developing the carcinoma than the patient with long segment disease. 
complication of barrett esophagus so it can be like ulceration or it can be structure formation in the long segment or we can say adenocarcinoma of the esophagus we know that this barrett esophagus has the potential of dysplasia so this dysplasia can be multifocal high grade dysplasia also which poses high risk of progression to invasive carcinoma or intramucosal carcinoma so these all will be the complication of barrett esophagus that's all we'll get back to you soon till then work hard and dream big thank you